Hello guys, this is the first part of adding the cart page to the project. In this part, we want to implement all the necessary methods that the cart page needs to work. And after this lesson, whenever you go to a food page and click on add to cart, or when you click on the cart menu on the header, you could be able to see cart page as a separate page. This step is a little bit boring, so try not to get bored. Let's go. Here is the roadmap for this lesson. Let's start by creating the cart item model because we need it inside the cart model. From the explorer, right click on the models and click on new file. Then write cart item.ts. Press enter. Then write export class cart item to create your cart item model. First property is food required and it is of type food. Second property is quantity of type number and its default value is one. And the last property is price type number and its default value should be equal to this.food.price. Now we need to define a constructor here that gets the food as the input, then it should set this food parameter to this food property here. So let's set this.food equal to food. So this.food means this food that is part of the class and the food is the input parameter of the constructor. But as you can see, with defining the food, we are doing a lot of repetitive codes. There is a solution that we already did, if you remember, for injecting the services into the components. Put an access modifier here, for example, private. If you want to use the food inside the class, we don't want to do it. We want it to be accessible from the outside. So let's make it public. So the food will be defined as a property of this class and it will be accessible from the outside and it is required to. So we can remove this part and this part because it will be automatically done. It is a very nice way to make your models and your classes clean. Okay. We created our cart item model. Let's go for the next model. That is the cart where we want to use it. Let's close it. Then once again, right click on the shared models folder and click on new file. But this time set it to cart.ts. Create your model using export class cart. Its first field is items with the type of cart item array with the default value of empty array. So when you use new keyword to create a new instance of the cart, the items will be an empty array instead of undefined. That will be set if you define it using just an empty object, just like how we do inside the JavaScript. The second field is total price. Its type is number and its default value is zero. And the last field is total count with the type of number and it is zero by default. So our cart model is ready. Let's go for the next step. That is generating the cart service. So from the terminal, new terminal, go to the front end folder and write NGGS for generating your services inside services folder with the name of cart. Press enter. So it says the cart service is created. Close the terminal from the explorer. Go to the services and you could be able to see the cart service.ts. Very nice. Open it up. So we are inside the cart service. Here we need to define a field that holds the cart. So private cart with the type of cart. Set the default value to new cart. And for the second property, I want to define something new that you already worked with it, but maybe you don't know the concept and it is cart subject. That is of type behavior subject. And its default value should be new behavior subject with the type of this dot cart. You may ask, what is behavior subject, man? For knowing what is behavior subject, I made a video about observables, subjects, and behavior subjects. So if you want to have a better knowledge about them, just pause the video, go watch that video, then come back and continue. After the constructor, the first method that I want to add is add to cart method. 
Its input parameter is food with the type of food and its output is void. Just adds the food to the cart. But first of all, we need to check the cart. When we adding a new food to the cart, you normally want to see this food with the quantity of two, not two different rows for showing each food. Doesn't make sense. So first of all, we need to find the cart item. So let's say let cart item equal to this.cart.items find the item where item.food.id is equal to food.id the food is not imported here press control dot and press import so the error goes away we have the food imported in this file here we go okay so we search through the items of the cart and we try to find the food inside it when their IDs are equal to ID of the food that we want to add to the cart. If it doesn't fit in a single line, you can press enter and move it to the next line. We should check if cart item, if the food is already added to the cart, then we need to return. It shouldn't continue the process. Otherwise, we need to write this.cart.items.push new cart item with this food. So we made add to cart functionality. It's time for remove from cart functionality when you want to remove a food from the cart. So let's write remove from cart. Its input parameter is food ID with a type of string. And its output is void. For doing the remove from cart, we need to do a trick. So let's write this.cart.items. We need to set the items to this.cart.items, but filter with the items where item.food.id are not equal to this food ID. Let's move the filter to the next line. In fact, we are removing this food ID from the list of items. Okay, so simple, right? Let's go to the next method. That is change quantity. It needs a food ID with the type of string and a quantity with the type of number. Once again, we need to find the cart item. Let's cart item equal to this.cart.items.find item where item.food.id is equal to food ID. Here we go. We should say if cart item is not available then return it shouldn't do anything normally it will not happen but for bypassing the compile errors of the typescript we need to do this check let's set the cart item that quantity equal to the quantity that we pass to this method and let's calculate the cart item price that will be equal to quantity multiplied by cart item dot food dot price we made the change quantity function. We need another method with the name of clear cart. That will do nothing special. We just set the cart equal to new cart. And for the next method, we have get cart observable. That returns an observable of type cart. And for having an observable from the cart, we just need to return this dot cart subject and convert it to observable using as observable method. We send it as observable because if we send the subject to the outside, we could be able to change the value of the subject from the outside of the cart service. We don't want it to happen because any changes to the cart should happen inside the cart service. Okay, we added all the method that was necessary for the cart service. But the problem is we are defining a new cart on the memory. And anytime we refresh the page inside the browser, the cart will be removed and will be empty. The solution for keeping your data persistent inside the browser is using the local storage. So I want to create two methods, one for setting cart to the local storage and the other one for getting cart from the local storage. So let's add the first method that is private. We don't want them to be accessible from the outside. Set cart to local storage. This is the name of the method. Return type is void. First of all, we need to convert the cart that is an object to a string JSON. So let's write const cart JSON equal to JSON all capital stringify this dot cart. 
So now we have a string representation of the cart that is of type JSON. Secondly, you can say local storage dot set item and set the key of the local storage, for example, cart, and you can pass the cart JSON. Now we just set our cart to the local storage, but there is a problem. We didn't set the value of total price and total count to the cart. So I want to say this dot cart the total price equal to this dot cart dot items dot reduce. First parameter of the reduce is the accumulator. It has the Pref sum, previous sum, and the current item. Then we need to say the pref sum should be plus by current item dot price. Then we need to set the default value for this sum. I know it's a little bit complicated. Let me explain it for you. The reduce function will start to call this method based on number of items that you have inside your item. For example, if you have two items, this function will be called two times. To start from the first one, the previous sum is zero. So we set the initial value to zero. So the previous sum for the first run is zero and we have the current item of type cart item. So we make zero plus price of the first item for example if it is 20 the result of this function will be 20 and the 20 will be the previous sum for the next item inside the cart so assume we are on the next run previous sum is 20 and the current item has a price of 40 previous sum plus 40 will be 60 okay so 60 will return from the radius and will be the total price we need to do the same thing with the total count equal to this dot cart dot items dot reduce pref sum and current item this time pref sum should be plus current item dot quantity because we want total count not total price so we have the total count and total price. Don't get confused about it. Just tell your mind this is sum of price and this is sum of quantities. Okay, that's pretty nice. And there is another missing part here. When we set something to the local storage, it means we are changing the cart. So anybody who's listening to the cart observable should be notified. To notify all the listeners of the cart observable. We need to use this dot cart subject dot next. And the next value of the cart is this dot cart. The cart that we changed it. Okay. So our set cart to local storage method is completely ready. Now it's time for the next method that is private get cart from local storage that returns a cart. This job is so simpler. We just need to say get the cart JSON from the local storage with the key of cart. Remember the key that you set item to the local storage should be exactly the same with the key that you get the item from the local storage. Then we need to return and check if the cart JSON is available. Then use json.parse cart JSON to convert it to the cart object. Otherwise, just return a new cart or an empty cart. As you can see, we define these two methods as private methods. So they just need to be used inside this class. So let's use them where they need to be used. From the top, instead of new cart, we need to use this dot get cart from local storage. Because inside this method, if there is no item inside the local storage, it will return a new cart. So Normally, we have the new card too, okay? After this point, anywhere inside this class that we change the card, we need to set the card to the local storage. Let's start from the add to card. So let's write set card to local storage. The next method, we need to copy this 
and use it inside the remove from cart method. Okay. When we change the quantity, we need to set it to the local storage. And when we clear the cart, we need to set it to local storage. Okay. Our cart service is ready. It's time for the next step that is giving functionality to the add to cart button inside the food page. So let's go to the food page component from the components, pages, food page. Inside the food page component.ts, add a method with the name of add to cart. But for adding food to the cart, we need to inject the cart service that we defined seconds ago. Let's inject it here. Press comma, press enter, write cart service with the type of cart service. Very nice. It should be defined as private because we want it to be accessible throughout the class, not just inside the constructor because we want to use it inside this method. Let's write this.cartService.addToCart this.food. So by calling this add to cart method, the current food that we are seeing will be add to the cart. But this is not enough. We want to redirect the user to the cart page whenever he clicks on the add to cart button. For doing this, we need to inject the router. Okay. Inside the constructor parameters, put a comma, then write private router with the type of router. Now, Let's use the router to move the user to the cart page. This.router.navigate by URL, then move user to the cart dash page. We didn't define this route yet, but in the next step, after generating the cart page component, we're going to do it. Okay, our method is ready, but we need to use it inside the template file. Click on food page component.ts and select food page components.html. Scroll down and for the button, add a click event with parentheses and set it to add to cart. So anytime you click on the add to cart button, it will be moved out to the cart page. But we didn't implement it yet, so let's go and generate the cart page component. From the view, click on terminal and write ngGC to generate the component inside components folder, pages folder with the name of cart dash page. Then press enter. So our component is generated. It's time for the next step that is adding the route of cart page to the app routing module. Open up the explorer and inside the app routing module, create another entry and set its path to cart dash page. Exactly the same thing that we set inside the food page, this one. Then set its component to cart page component. Now, if we go inside the browser, and if we click on this add to cart button, we could be able to see cart page works. And if we come back and click on this cart item inside the header, we could be able to see the cart page works. On the next lesson, we want to show the cart page here. Show the items like this. See the total price and add to cart button. And we also need to change the number of items on the cart page badge inside the header. You've been watching Code with Nasir and I hope to see you next time.